to know if the president's job speech before Congress next week is going to promote the private enterprise incentives or more big government spending and planning. Here now we bring in CNBC contributor Jared Bernstein. He's former chief economist for Vice President Biden. We have Louisiana Republican Senator David Vitter and former Verizon Wireless CEO Denny Striegel. He's the author of Managers, Can You Hear Me Now? Denny, I want to begin with you. You're kind of our private sector guy in the panel. What are you hearing? What should President Obama do to deal with this failing economy? Well, first of all, cut taxes. No question in my mind about that. Taxes are too high. Create some investment incentives. Temporary tax cuts, which I think are coming, or permanent no, marginal rate reductions. Te temp we've, we've had enough temporary everything, Larry. What we need is something that is permanent, something that causes people and businesses to want to invest. Jared Bernstein, I want to go with you. It doesn't sound great to me in terms of private enterprise versus big government. In particular, it sounds like the centerpiece is going to be this new Fannie Mae for Public Works called the Infrastructure Bank, Jared. That doesn't sound promising. I don't think the infrastructure bank is going to be the infrastructure uh, program, largely because that takes a couple of years to set up and capitalize. I think what you're going to hear about is much more fast-working kinds of infrastructure ideas. What you may hear about is an idea that, that I, think, I think could actually really help a lot. It's called FAST, Fix America's Schools Today. I'd actually be interested in where, where you're at on this one. Uh, the idea is you've got a backlog of a repair, maintenance, insulation, retrofitting to the 100,000 public schools across the country. And this is a program that could be stood up quickly and get a lot of folks back to work. Let me just say, Larry, the way you set this up, big government, private enterprise, that's 40,000 feet up in the air. And if the unemployment rate was at 5%, I'd be happy to have that argument with you like we have through the years. We could have a lot of fun. But right now, this has got to be about moving the needle on unemployment. Put your ideologies aside, and let's figure out what works. Well, wait a minute. Senator Vitter, ideology, meaning ideas, play a big role in this. I want to get a sense of where the Republican sure. reaction is is going to be. You've heard, Jared, we're going to fix America's schools, right. meaning essentially another public sector building program. Yeah, is that yeah, going to fix this? Private sector. Private sector. Well, are you going to fix private schools, Jared? Let me just no, get, me get this right. private workers. Private workers. Private not on workers. the public sector. Private right, workers. Union, right. union private workers. All right, Senator Vitter, let me go to you. What's your right, reaction to I'll be honest with this? you. To me, it sounds like same old, same old. Sounds like shovel-ready projects. Sounds like a portion of the stimulus. Been there, done that, and it gave us a trillion dollars of more debt and not a lot of economic growth. I absolutely agree with Denny. We need to stir investors through permanent changes. None of this temporary stuff. People are sitting on, on their hands and they're going to continue to sit on their hands with these temporary incentives. And the only thing permanent on the tax side that the president is adamant about is a permanent increase in terms of the expiring top rates. Uh, Larry, can I ask a question of the other panelists? Quickly, let me ask one question. Before I came here tonight, I clicked on my national income tables, and I noticed that the after-tax profit rate of corporations right now, after-tax profit rate as a share of GDP, is the highest it's been in the series of these data going back to 1947. These guys are sitting on trillions of cash reserves. If they're not going to invest now with their after-tax well, profits off the map, you want to give them more? You want La to cut it? Larry, I think, Larry, I think Jared is absolutely making my point. Everyone who has the capacity to create jobs is sitting on their hands right now because all, of all of the threats and attacks and uncertainty coming out of this administration. See, and Larry, they need I, to I, hear I, something I, fundamentally Dennis, different. Dennis, Schroeder, let me ask you about this. It's a common fallacy from this administration that either government creates jobs or consumers create jobs. But I thought it was businesses that create no jobs. And not. that gives you the income to spend. Now, what will get cons uh, businesses, businesses to unlock the $2 trillion mm -hmm. in cash. That's the $64,000 uh, question. Larry, there, there is more money sitting on the sidelines waiting to be invested now than we've had in years and years. How do I but want the it? issue so is... So why do you want to cut taxes? The, issues, the issue is that consumers are not buying. What, right. what, are people, what are businesses going to invest in? If consumers don't buy their products, who are you going to hire? No, but why I don't you think that's the issue. I David, think that's David right. Vitter, Senator Vitter, let me just Bingo. go to you. What, what is... Here's the deal. I think there's an over-regulation problem 
problem, okay? Absolutely. I think the EPA going after coal and electricity. I think Obamacare is overregulation. Yes. The National Labor Relations Board now going for a backdoor card check. We're going to discuss later in the show. The Justice Department yes. stopping the uh, merger between AT&T and um, T-Mobile. In other words, yeah, Larry, Larry, absolutely the everything. The, the House Republicans under Eric Cantor have started a deregulation drumbeat. Would yeah. that be continued through the Obama speech? Uh, job creators want to see that sort of fundamental change in policy. People are sitting on their hands who could invest and create jobs because, as I said, virtually everything they see coming out of this administration, this Washington, is either an outright attack increased health care costs, uh, much increased regulation, EPA, NLRB, et cetera, or it's at least a threat or uncertainty. And that's what fundamentally yeah. needs to change. You see, Jared, the, no, more okay, government Jared, spending, Jared, does, Jared, not, I think the more government spending does not change that. No, no, even, and a temporary even, incentive does not change that. Right. Okay, Jared, okay, hold on. I think Go you're ahead. overlooking. I think you, okay. the president, and the vice president are overlooking the regulatory noose around the necks yes. of large, but not just large more importantly small businesses I think you're missing that Jared That's well look here's, exactly here's right. my perspective on that Larry I, I don't think you're wholly wrong in the following sense and I saw this when we were working on the Recovery Act in the White House it, it's not that the regulations need to be scrapped it's that they need to be streamlined so in many cases I agree with you it does take too long but, uh, but, but before you get the idea for a factory to you can get the clearance to build it but none of the things that you or the other two guests have been talking about have anything to do with moving the needle on jobs or Unemployment yes, in, the, in the yes, short term. Do. In the are short term. Well, no, let when me the NLRB says the NLRB says that. Says that. Not, not creating new jobs in South Carolina. That has job job nothing to do with the job creation. One of the most important issues that needs to be resolved is regulation. Hang on, Jared. Hang on, Jared. What is happening here is businesses are looking for, they're seeing out of this administration more and more regulatory hurdles that they've. Look at AT&T. Right. Let's focus on AT&T and T-Mobile. Now, if AT&T is prevented from making this deal, T-Mobile is a moribund company. Who is going to expand the spectrum? Who is going to expand broadband and the jobs that are being well, that, that could be created? Larry, Isn't that, that a, an example AT &T of this? AT&T said they would bring 5,000 jobs into the United States. They said they would invest six six billion additional dollars. What, what are we doing here? This so, what, what will happen to T-Mobile is they will wither on the vine. They don't have the spectrum. They haven't made the investment. Spectrum is the lifeblood of wireless companies. What AT&T so, so, can do with this is keep prices Jared, low. Jared, okay. that is the administration's Larry, Justice Department. Yeah, they have I, a responsibility to stop this kind of regulation, Jared. I, I Larry, take let point. me bring up Look, another let me, wait, let me hang on, hold hang on, on. I, I, Let Jared respond, please. So he, here's the thing. If I told you that there is a monopoly who is willing to come and set up their business in this country and they promise they're going to create a million jobs, I have a, a funny feeling you'd say, go ahead, set it up. You know, the Justice Department is, is not talking about jobs. They're talking about protecting consumers. Now, that may not be what you or I or anybody else wants to hear right now because we have such a jobs deficit. But I think you're conflating two issues here. I don't if think so. Jared, if, my if, friend, if, I think this is the wrong time for the Justice Department to use 1950s regulatory ass assessments that's of not consumer the protection. No, the it question is, question. is, no, the question is will this rate, the I question is, is it anti-competitive and will it raise prices for consumers? You see, that is a 1950s a 1950s view of the old industrial economy. And this uh -huh. is exactly the kind of sophisticated, nuanced regulatory problem that the White House has missed from day one, Jared. Well, look, Larry, I, I I'm not. I, I think the problem here, I, I think the Justice Department lawyers are making a judgment about competition. Now, you may be right, Larry. They may be making that judgment incorrectly, but it's really about consumers. It's about monopoly power, and, and it's not really about jobs. Uh, Senator Vitter, I get that. Senator Vitter, Larry, if I, I can give you the last word, because example, the, the EP, what about yes, Boeing? Please, go ahead. What about Boeing trying to create brand new jobs in South Carolina and being sued by the NLRB. I talk to business folks all the time who say if the Obama administration is going to do that to Boeing, creating new jobs, that's not, not the Obama administration, jobs, that's the NLRB. What the heck are they going to do to me? You're, you're confusing the Obama administration with an independent regulator, the NLRB. Oh, right. Right. Yes. Yep. That is right. Senator Vitter, it is right. Union Senator Vitter, what about what about driving that agenda? What about the EPA assault on the coal and electricity businesses, Absolutely. which is coming down the pike? Isn't that sure. another job destroyer also? 
Yes, absolutely. And in this recession, when families in Louisiana have to cut their budget, when small business has to cut their budget, you know what's happened to the EPA budget? In two years, it's grown 29%. Yeah. And with that so regulation... we got to jump out. we got to jump out. Gentlemen, I know there's disagreements, but I'll tell you, I'm for private enterprise in this. Jared Bernstein, Denny Striegel, and Senator Vitter, we appreciate it now. Thank you, Larry. Well,